Hello. Today we're in the Gerloch, uh, one of the sea lochs, uh, just off off the Clyde. Uh, we are trying to see if we can maybe catch some dogfish today. Not holding out much hope. Again, time of year, it's April. Uh, it's the Clyde. I'm still trying to stay close to home because of the, the, the lockdown rules. Well, there's still a chance. The old dog fish. Fish in the tide got out, not ideal. But I'll give it a try, see how it goes. I'm fishing with uh, mackerel and sand eel baits. I'm trying to keep them reasonably small because there are a chance of some small flatfish here as well, like dabs. And there's Just put out a cocktail of a bit of micro and a bit of sand eel. Tie it on your hook. I'm using one of those. Again, I could probably use smaller to be honest, but. Beat me. And I just find it a fantastic wee tool to help kind of prepare your bait just so it's ready to stick on your hook. And then there's minimal messing about when you're actually trying to beat up. So the idea behind it is just lay it into a U shaped sort of furrow in this bait mate tool, which is just a small bit of alloy. <laughs> That's it again. You can see I've got the two baits just sitting on top of each other and then from there it's very really easy just to be able to I mean, don't even really need to hold it to be honest just to bind it together As I say, that prepares the bait and saves me having to do it at the point when I'm putting it on the hook and That lets me prepare a few pieces to save the messing around as I say at home up to. Might still need to put a wee bit of thread on it when it comes to actually putting on the hook. But you see, once it's bound, you can easily just slide it off and actually get your bound bait. We'll do that one our cupboard. Now I also like keeping the flesh side of the mackerel out. It's up to yourself really. I like it because I feel that it lets out a wee bit more scent than putting the skin side on. The skin side out, sorry. Rig I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use Two hooks, one up, one down. One of hooks, as I say. Snid's 40 pound weight and strain. I think it's an easier fluorocarbon, if I remember it exactly. Uh, and as I said, one of hooks. Hook snids are about maybe 15 to 18 inches. As I say, not expecting much today. Tide going out, April, bright sunshine, 
a marsh fish in the reasonably deep water uh, which may just help make a difference of catching a fish today or not so as I say that's one of the baits I've prepared the idea is just put the hook in make sure the point comes back out lay the eye in against the bait and then I'm just going to bind that one So you don't need a lot of plastic because I've already bound it together.
I actually caught something. Yeah. Clap you through. Which is just basically a huge muscle. Yeah. I think in, in Scotland, and the old Gaelic for it is clabby do, which I think is means big black mouth. Yeah. But it's basically just a muscle, a big huge one. And it's actually, it must have been open, it's taken the hook, and it came in with it actually. Uh, the bait inside the muscle, so who knows? Maybe use that for a bit of bait later on. Yeah. Nearly the middle of April, and we're getting snow and hail and wind, sunshine, usual Scotland, four seasons. I'll give that about 15 minutes. I'll give it a wee bit longer, I'll give it maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes out and see what it does. Very steep here, uh, so I mean that distance out amount to maybe about 20 metres of water. So even despite the fact that it's quite a bright day and it's uh, the surface temperature, the water will still be quite cold. Deeper marks usually help you produce a bit more fish, especially this time of year, April. Okay. But nothing is yet. But we'll plod on. See what we do.
20 minutes out. Okay, it's still not really touched. So I think I'm in for another tough day. Using a fixed bill with uh, I think it's fifty six or fifty seven pound braid. Yeah. Uh, I a braid because it's in diameter. And it still allows you to cast a good distance within diameter, uh, but again gives you a good bit of strength coming through. I mean that is a wee bit there is a bit of roughness out there, it's pulling through some kelp. And as I say, the clappy do you've seen earlier, sometimes you're, you're getting them clamped on when you've got pulling through. And, um, that's the reason for the rig as well, having quite a, 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 a rough ground rig. It's a £60 braking strain uh, mainline and £40 snoods. And again, just because of how abrasive it is out there with the shingle, the muscle, the kelp. I know braid's not exactly the best for abrasion proof, but it's more so uh, where the lead's lying, the terminal tackle it needs to be a wee bit more uh, a wee bit more tougher. I keep winding in every now and again, just a couple of feet because uh, when you cast out the deep for water it's a big ball lying out in the, the sky and also let your lead uh, fall to the sea dead as well don't engage the bail arm straight away let it line out so it actually sinks to the bottom because you engage the, the bail arm the lead starts to move in towards you so you're losing a bit of the distance that you're trying to get However, when you're letting all that line out, the big bore line that's in the air, when it hits the seabed, you're letting more line out to let it sink. There is quite a lot of line out there and it gradually sinks as well. Uh, and with that, you need to wind in a wee bit just so it's not going to lie at your feet. And, uh, the ground here itself, it goes out quite gradually and then just slopes off like that. And uh, that's how a lot of times when you actually tighten up and gauge with your grip lead in the ground. Uh, it looks like the line is near enough that your feet is only maybe about 7 or 8 yards out again it's just because of the terrain that it dips down like that so again that's why you probably need a wee bit of uh, robust terminal gear when you're, you're pulling up because a lot of times you're pulling up over a bit of a a, a, uh, a, brow, a brow of a, a hill it's essentially going down into the, the, the sea bed Tighten up slowly now to the grip lead. 
I'm starting to see a wee bit of bend in the road and a wee bit of tension in that one. But still, nothing yet. Keep plodding away and see if we can get Looking over towards Clinder. And then, what's the vault, if you can see it, just over the jetty? We've got a whole load of hail coming towards us. As I say, near enough middle of April, and it's almost the winter's conditions. <laughs> but, I'm not complaining if he ends up with a wee fish. We dogfish shall be happy with. <coughs> right, planning over towards Clinton. Down towards Rosneath. And through. And then back to the road. So, any bites? Nothing. So there is marine life out there, albeit a crab. Just typical of Scotland. I don't mean to sound cynical, but really today we've had four seasons in the one day. We've had lovely sunshine, we've had rain, we've had sleet, we've had snow, hail, wind, and now just to really uh, finish off today as I'm ready to pack up, I get a really heavy hail shower. Very poor today, unfortunately, but as I say, just this time of year, to be honest with you, don't really expect much. Uh, having to stay local, not helping. So hopefully, I think in a couple of weeks' time, 
uh, our duty come out of the stay local sort of phase uh, and should be able to go a wee bit further afield and see if we can actually catch some fish uh, but for now I think it's time to reel this in and there's no fish on it, no bites so I'm happily going to get out of this hail get the road, get something to eat, nice and warm and then relax the rest of the night and watch some YouTube fishing videos and see how to catch fish <laughs> tight lines for now